for those of us that are beginners, uh, there's many of you that probably got sea stars for the holidays as gifts or you bought one yourself. And I wanted to just do some um, entry level beginner videos showing you how to get started. So the first one I wanna do is show you how to go stargazing with your sea star. So um, hopefully you have downloaded the sea star app if you have not done that, um, just go to the App Store or the Google Play Store or whichever method that you get apps and do a search for the Sea Star app. And it looks like this with the black background and a star in it. And download it to your device. And then once you're ready to go, you just tap on the Sea Star. I have powered on my Sea Star so um, it should connect and it did right there and so it's powered on and so um, there are a few settings that i want you to make sure are turned on so in, in order to get to the settings you can get there either by clicking on the picture of the sea star or right under the picture to the left is a dialog box that says s30 with some numbers behind it e click on either one of those and it takes you to the settings and in the settings um, just scroll down and I want you to, uh, you can change the volume here if you want to change the volume. Um, but what I want you to do is go scroll down to the bottom and click on the advanced feature. And then it brings up this screen. At the top here you can change your exposure times. Um, I have the S30 set up in azimuth mode, which means it's basically sitting on the tripod that came in the box and screwed onto there. There's no mounts or anything, nothing angling it off of that mount. And so that is in azimuth mode. And in azimuth mode, you have the option of 10 second exposures, 20 second exposures, or 30 second exposures. As you get more comfortable, we'll do some videos about setting it up in equatorial or EQ mode. And we'll show you how to do that. And once you do that, there will be an option for 60 second exposures. But for now, we're just going to continue. We'll do it at the 20 seconds. Now, the what I want to make sure that you have turned on is this live button. Make sure that that is turned on. And that just allows you to watch the screen, watch the live stacking of the images while you're imaging. Make sure it's turned on, otherwise you won't see that happening. And then right below it, it says save each frame. Make sure that is turned on. And so that's what I wanna make sure that you have turned on before we start to go stargazing. And now um, let's go back to that home screen up in the top left hand corner, click that arrow back button. And then on this screen at the very bottom in the bottom left corner, click on that star, C star star, and that takes you to the main menu of the screen. Now to do stargazing, all you do is tap on this little box that says stargazing. And then it opens up this screen to let you pick what object you're going to be imaging. Um, I'm currently recording this in my house in the daytime, so I won't be actually doing the imaging, but I'm just gonna show you how to get started. There's a few ways you can find the object. You can use the search box, and for some reason you have to tap, tap it, and either a long delay till it moves or tap it twice, I'm not sure why that is so hard. I guess it's loading the, the list. I don't know. Um, and right here, it's just showing um, a list of things that I've done recently. But um, if you want to just find something, just tap in that little search object box and then type something in. So say you want to do M31 and then search and then it will bring up M31. Now, if you're ready to just go to it and start imaging, you could click the go to. But if you want to find out some information about it, click on the text here, the, the M31 Andromeda Galaxy. Click on that text and it will open up an information box for you. At the top is a picture of what you can kind of expect. And then there's a little description here about the object. And then there's visibility 
um, chart is very valuable. And so um, uh, currently it's saying that the Andromeda galaxy is at 0% altitude. Well, that's because it's, you know, 11 o'clock in the morning and it won't be visible until later this evening. Um, but um, this box is pretty valuable because on the right-hand side of that box, the, the top corner of that box, it says northeast. It tells you where the object is located in the sky. And so um, as you're along the bottom of that box are numbers, 12, 16, 20. Those are time stamps. And so um, if you move this back to a, a different time, so six, this is done in military time. So is the 24 hour time instead of 12 hour time. And so if you went to uh, 12 would be noon and uh, 16 would be 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Andromeda will be at 43 degrees and it will be to the east. As you continue on further, once we get to midnight, which is zero on that time scale, it's at 47 degrees and now is in the west and it's starting to set or it's about halfway set, I guess. And so this, this visibility scale can be very helpful for you to determine where it's at in the night sky so that you don't put your sea star out there and then have it pointing at your neighbor's house for four hours. And so um, this visibility thing is, is useful. Um, once you're satisfied that you're ready to go, you just click go gazing and it will start doing the imaging. Um, I can't really do it because I'm in the house and it's not going to find it. So there's nothing to see. Uh, so just click that go gazing. If you're back here on this list, you could also just click the go to if you don't want to look at that visibility chart or any of the information, just click go to from here and that would be fine as well. Um, from this list, you could also just click on it down in that tonight's best. And if you just click on it, it brings up the same exact thing that we already saw. It's just in a list of objects that are going to be good to image tonight. Um, to the right of that tonight's best, there's a more with an arrow. If you click that, it brings up a list of all of the objects that are going to be available to you tonight. And it does use your location, so it should be um, situated for your location. In the top right-hand corner, there is these little lines with circles on them. If you click on those, you, it's a filter, so you can filter out. Um, so my house is situated so that it's hard for me to image from the east to the south. And so I have excluded those and all you do is tap on those little segments of that circle and it will eliminate those. So it doesn't include things that are in those areas. You can also change, filter it by time of day and altitude. Uh, and then you just click okay. And it, it filters what's going to be available to you during that period of time that you filtered it to and the area in the sky that you've said that you can image to. So um, that's another way to find things. And then as you scroll down, you can get things by um, category, like galaxies, nebulas, star clusters, the Messier catalog, you know, different catalogs, that Thor's helmet, that's a fun one. Uh, the solar system, you know, it, it categorizes it. Once you find it, you just click go to um, once you are imaging this box around the stargazing will turn orange um, the very first time that you um, start imaging something in the evening it will as soon as it finds that first object it will do initialization processes and autofocus so just allow it to go through that process so it, it takes maybe a minute minute and a half um, i have cloudy skies for the foreseeable future so i i don't know if i can get to be able to get a video made showing how that works but if i can get one i will do that 
but that's how you go stargazing for the very first time. Uh, we encourage you all to join the channel. We'll do a whole bunch of beginner videos to help you get started with your new sea stars. And we'd love to have you along on the journey. We're, we're happy to answer questions. If we know the answers, we will share and find out if we don't know the answers. But we'd welcome you on the journey. And we're wishing everybody clear skies.